view maker of the session. In fact, as, as Michael says, you know, that first hour we saw uh, some pretty deep red. But if you look at the graph off the back of that, it's a, sort of a, a continued climb into the close. James, it was a bit of a disappointing session given that we did see a positive lead from the US on Friday with a gain of 0.7% and yet during the morning our market was down as much as 1.2%. If we have a look at what drove that though, it does look like offshore factors. It wasn't just the Australian market being sold off. We saw the US futures down around about half a percent during the day. The Korean Cosby also down by 1.2%. So you can't really say that it is end of year positioning because the Korean market has an end of year which is December and the whole day they've seen worse losses than us. So if we have a look at what happened on the market, really there was no particular market moving event for the weakness on the market. It does look like investors are very jittery and of course the focus will be back on Europe this week. We'll see the EU summit on Thursday and Friday and some bond auctions as well. If we have a look at uh, some domestic drivers, we did see around about 25 stocks on the Aussie market going ex-dividend today, but most of those were in the property space and the property space didn't fare too badly by the the end of the session only down by 0.25 percent in fact it was the materials which drove down our market once again we saw BHP down by 1.4 percent we saw Newcrest down by around about three percent the banks losing up to half a percent although ANZ was up by 0.3 percent by the end of the session and once again extremely light volumes only 3.4 billion dollars worth of stock being traded so no market moving events but it does look like investors jittery and unfortunately the market down by half a percent of the absence of foreign investors and, and do you expect it to change? I mean, do you, what more needs to happen for them to, to come in? I guess really two reasons. First of all is that valuations, you, you want them to be driven by an increase in earnings, not a falling price. But what we've been seeing in terms of the Australian market are all these downgrades from cyclical companies coming through. So rather than a growth in earnings, the reason why we are seeing valuations so attractive on the market and yields so attractive is simply that price has fallen instead of earnings being driven upwards. Instead, we've seen a number of earnings downgrades coming through and the analysts downgrade cycles still continuing as well. Confession season has started. So I guess instead of our valuations being driven by a growth in earnings, which we've seen in the US and the US market has had a relatively better performance than the Australian market, we've seen the Australian valuations really being driven by the fall that we've seen in price. And at the same time, we've seen earnings falling as well, as well as forecasts for FY13 falling. Secondly, the market is being driven by macro events. And in that, uh, that that's what's driving over a lot of the overseas investors and certainly the macro funds have been quite active. So in that there's still nerves around Europe and I guess a lot of our macro investors are positioning themselves to the end of the end game. So a lot of it is risk aversion. We're seeing equity premiums still uh, at a high. So altogether valuations extremely attractive but unfortunately for Australian companies that's not being driven by the increase in earnings but rather than rather than that uh, a fall in price rather than the US market where we have seen a steady growth in earnings and the US market is holding up relatively well. Martin just mentioned there and, and as you do downgrades confession season uh, petrol very much front and center I suppose in terms of that conversation today uh, however we saw quite a positive reaction on market. The shares uh, were up around about 3%, so an extremely positive reaction given that we have seen Perpetual very much in focus because of takeover speculation. Back in 2010, we saw KKR bidding $34 to $40 uh, on a conditional basis for the shares, and of course, they're far away from that at the moment. But the plan they've put in place today, I guess, is a, a best case scenario. So if we have a look at if things go wrong and this strategy doesn't play out, I guess the market is predicting that uh, speculation around the possible takeover really puts a floor on perpetual share price. So some big changes announced today, mostly in the form of cost savings. I don't think much of it was a surprise to the market. And I guess the market thinking, well, the worst case scenario is that if we do see further weakness in terms of the share price, that it could come into play as a takeover target. And so really putting a bottoming on the share price. So perpetual shares doing pretty well today up by 3%.